Hey, Fred, do you remember the Alamo? Why would I want to do that? Well, stay tuned and we'll figure it out. Welcome back, Gettle Campers. Last week, we gave a tour of our campground in Lake Hills, Texas. If you have not seen that, we will put the link up so you can check it out after this video. Today we are headed to the Alamo, where 300 years of Texas history is brought to life. First, let's work out a few of the housekeeping events for this adventure. A big question that is usually asked is where should we park? We chose to Google places to park and we found a lot that was just a two minute walk to our destination. We parked at the Marriott San Antonio River Walk and paid $20. We walk through the Marriott. We're walking through this lobby who has an adventure in itself. Fred and I purchased our self-guided audio tour online and reserved an entry time for the Alamo Church. Entering the Alamo Church is always free, but they do require a timed entry reservation. Be sure to pick up your audio wand at the welcome kiosk, which is a little red building in front of the church. The Alamo Church has become the most recognizable structure on the Alamo grounds. It was originally a Spanish mission church and later played a vital role in the 1836 Battle of the Alamo. There are some traces from the battle still there. The church is the only area on the grounds where you cannot take photographs or video. We read that the Alamo Church has been designated a shrine by the state of Texas and is a place of reverence and reflection. After touring the inside of the church, we exited the side door that opened out into a lovely garden. We saw the Aquia. An Aquia is an irrigation ditch that provided a source of water to farms and the missions, allowing the mission and the farms to thrive. Now it is full of beautiful koi fish for our enjoyment and relaxation. After you pass by the Aquia, you will find many trees, shrubs, and flowers that host so much life and history in this garden. In the center, you will find a cactus garden full of prickly pear and yucca. It is a lush and scenic area with cactus, shade trees, and a variety of budding and fruit bearing plants. There is a lot that goes into maintaining those grounds and the biggest challenges is the foot traffic that goes by there. Whenever someone steps into a flower bed to take a picture or pick a piece of fruit, the groundskeepers notice this and have to repair any damage. So please be careful to stay on the walkways. Here in the gardens, there are tents where they have a living history encampment where you can meet living historians and enjoy hands-on demonstrations about the daily life at the time of the Texas Revolution. Check out these outside exhibits in the garden. Too bad they are not open right now. The pecan tree at the Alamo is the eldest tree on the property. It was planted in 1850 by explorer, rancher, and entrepreneur that owned the property where the gift shop now stands. Speaking of the gift shop, let's head over there and check it out. Of course, you can't have an attraction without a gift center. All roads lead to the gift center, usually at the end of the attraction. And the Alamo is no exception. They got everything here. I think I might have to buy something. After checking out the gift shop, we exited into the Calvary Courtyard. It is a versatile outdoor venue for receptions and military ceremonies. The courtyard features an elevated stone platform with the iconic Six Flags of Texas and is surrounded by six beautiful sculpted bronze statues that convey the humanity and heroism of the story of the Alamo. Fred and I are going to check these out and share them with you. To all my Tennessee friends, the Friends Chairman, American humorist, politician, and Alamo Defender, Davy Crockett. This is William Barrett Travis, lawyer, soldier, and Alamo Defender. James Bowie. There you go, there's the Emily Morgan Hotel. Yeah, I don't think. 13 flights. I can get a chocolate chip cookie. Don't they know it's bad to have 13 floors? Oh, you look beautiful, baby. Ooh. Love you. 
So what do you think? We're here in the Alamo Memorial Gardens. All these statues of dead people. Would you come back? I definitely would. Yeah. It's definitely a place to come to see if you're in San Antonio area. I think it's um, the only place to come see. I don't think it's the only place, but it's the best place. Yeah. It's just really weird seeing all these high-rise buildings uh, wrapped around the Alamo that you see on TV yeah, you know, it's, back in the past. It's dead center in town. Get it? Dead center. Dead center. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in Texas, so don't. I'm not trying to spoil the story for you, but mm. yeah, don't don't mess with Texas because they'll be shouting, "Remember mm. the Alamo!" Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do we remember the Alamo? Stay tuned. Mm. The Alamo's Wall of History is a timeline that will guide you through each major period from the early 1700s to the present day. So what we got here is the Memorial Wall. It tells the story through time of the events. It's pretty interesting. All of it, yeah, it's right here. With pictures and everything. At the Alamo Mission, you will see a granite monument commemorating the Battle of the Alamo. Upon the stone is inscribed a poem. Get this, it's composed in classical Chinese. This compares the Alamo and its heroes to a famous incident in Japanese history, the Siege of Nagashino Castle. Remember the Alamo has a mission well, so stop by and make a wish. It was once used to provide water to the inhabitants of the great structure. It is now preserved in history under a very old oak tree. Check out this really cool millstone for grinding corn. It has etchings on the uh, outside of it of the Alamo grounds. I love this exhibit. It highlights the medical care at the Alamo it is what was the first recorded hospital in Spanish, Texas. Beside the hospital is the Long Barracks. It is the oldest building on the Alamo historic site where you can look at the history of the Alamo as well as check out the cool displays. You can also enjoy some time in the shade and view the crossroads of history, a video they share there. It converts the 300 years of history at the Alamo in just 17 minutes. We love how they have historians displaying ways of living in the past. Today this kind lady is showing us how they used to spin wool back in the 1800s. One of Fred's favorite parts of the Alamo was walking down the arcade where the arches are lined with cannons. Each cannon is the real deal, a genuine artifact, not a replica. Some of the cannons appear to be damaged, but those are just battle scars and part of their history. Fred and I are taking a bit of a break as we sit under the tree on the edge of the fountain to rest. This fountain is pretty cool, as all four sides of the fountain are engraved with the names of four of the Alamo defenders. Now that we've rested, it's time to visit the Alamo exhibit. It's full of priceless artifacts and historical documents. We're going to share just a few of them with you today. This iconic 16-pound cannon from the Battle of the Alamo is on display outside the Long Barracks. It is mounted on a handmade replica of an 1800-style carriage that resembles the one that would have been used during the battle in 1836. The Palisade is the newest outdoor exhibit that is located approximately where the original Palisade was in 1836. It is believed that Davy Crockett fought at the Palisade. This exhibit also features a replica of a four-pound bronze cannon. The Alamo Centitaph, also known as the Spirit of Sacrifice, is a memorial that is located near the front of the Alamo and stands to commemorate the men and women who chose to defend the Alamo. Each year, nearly three million visitors from all over the world come to visit the Alamo. What curator Dr. Bruce Winders finds remarkable is that everyone has a reason as to why we continue to remember the Alamo. And what it is, is when you start to talk to people, they'll usually say, we have something like this in our history. We have our own Alamo. 
And when you boil that down, the Alamo represents uh, really a, a definite set of values that cut across culture and nationality. Self-sacrifice, bravery, devotion, honor. These are things that doesn't matter who you are. These are traits that you can say, that's worth remembering. And so it's convinced me that it may be something that happened out on the Texas frontier in 1836, but yet it represents really a universal story.